Hi, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network and today at the Lynn Cove Research and Extension Center, growers and nursery representatives gathered for the annual citrus fruit and tasting event. Attendees enjoyed over a hundred varieties of citrus and were informed of the University of California's latest research here. Beth Grafton Cardwell, director of the Extension Center, explained the nature of the event. And we basically cut up over a hundred and fifty varieties of citrus fruit and growers and associated um, ag industry people come and taste citrus fruit and learn about all the different varieties and get to sort of figure out what they might want to plant next. This event has been going on for over 10 years, actually before my time as a director. Today we had three events at Lynn Cove highlighting various uh, research programs that we have going on here. We had Georgios Vitalakis uh, show off the Citrus Clonal Protection Program, which provides the budwood for all of the nursery industry in the state and beyond. And then we had Tracy Kahn from UC Riverside uh, walk people through the, our demonstration orchard, which she has planted, and, and talk about the different citrus varieties and look at the trees and how the, the citrus trees grow. And then we finished up with an with a tour of the new fruit grading system that we have down in the pack line, which the Citrus Research Board provided for us to do research with. Drift, and then all of a sudden you get a big issue and you have to replant the whole industry on a, on a, on a <coughs> resistant rootstock. All of a sudden navels don't sell and you need mandarins. You say, okay, where am I gonna get this? And if, this, if these programs are not in place, there is big, big problems. We keep an eye on the variety the next five to seven years to see if during that process that I described to you, taking a few cells and recreating a tree, did we change some of the characters of the fruit? We are doing what we call the trueness to type evaluation, making sure that when we say tree number one is an evil orange that matures in January, is truly an evil orange that matures in January after all this process. We're doing about 40 different things this year, including some clementines, and I think I'll let you guys explore. But this is, I said, California Rojo, which may be very similar to Caracara. So one thing you could do is pick an orange from here. It'd be good to share with everybody, but pick an orange and take it with you to Caracara and actually compare it to, to see the difference yourself. There's also these two uh, variegated Caracaras that are very interesting. One of them has been, has a VI and is available. And it was the one that came out of Lynn Cove. It was a, uh, a bud sport of Caracara. Each, each piece of fruit has 30 pictures taken to it, of it as it goes through the machine. And from that, we can uh, make distinctions between size, color, uh, defects of, of uh, fruit, whether it be scarring, uh, blemishes, um, and as it comes through the middle cabinet, it's a vision cabinet, and it, it's an actual cabinet that takes some pictures of each piece of fruit. And the last piece of equipment that's tilted up right now is an internal quality sorter, and uh, it actually works by uh, putting high intensity halogen lighting down each piece of fruit as it travels through it. And uh, there's a spectrometer at the very top, and by the amount of light that actually passes through the fruit, it's measured at the top. We can uh, fairly accurately make distinctions of uh, bricks, bricks levels in each piece of fruit. Uh, we've developed uh, granulation for which is citrus drying inside, which affects the navels and a lot of citrus. And we are currently working on acid, uh, being able to measure the acid inside each piece of fruit. And as you can imagine, with this frost that's gone on, one of the, one of the, the other avenues we're exploring is freeze damage. The last thing I forgot to mention is uh, this part of the unit right here is called the sizer. It's a weigh bridge. And it measures each piece of fruit that's traveling across that bridge at production speeds within a half a gram. And uh, that's pretty accurate. Uh, so, incredible. And that has its own useful features. Uh, the first cabinet over there, not to back up a little bit, is a UV cabinet, ultraviolet light. And, uh, we're just starting to do some work with it, but as you know in packing houses, it's very useful for, for uh, seeing things like rot, uh, freeze damage, uh, even insect damage. It shows up underneath the light as it 
bright. Any kind of defect will just show up bright. So in this particular experiment, we were looking at six sprays in the fall versus six sprays of oil in the fall and the spring to see if they had any impact on citrus on growth and development and fruit production. These sprays are designed for the ancient citrus cella, which is a pest that's coming into our valley. We were trying to see if you spray repeatedly with these chemicals would it hurt the trees. And so we looked at lots of different parameters like fruit length and width and weight and fruit volume and we saw a slight statistical actually improvement with these oil sprays in the size and weight of the fruit. And you notice there we looked at 229 trees and we looked at 100,000 pieces of fruit. So there's no way I could have done that in 1990. And it's just been wonderful having this particular equipment available to us. This particular event highlights is kind of a culmination of the year. We have lots of research going on here at the center, but this is our, our big fun event that we do just to share with everybody things that we've learned about citrus. And it's just really a fun time of year. Well, today was a lot of fun. Read more about the latest research in the citrus industry by reading California Fresh Fruit Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.